Hello guys, so today we are going to be talking about the analysis, continuing with this series, analysis of indeterminate structures, and today we are going to talk about the method of consistent deformations, better known as the method of forces. As you know, it's also called the method of forces, compatibility, sometimes it's called superposition, sometimes it's called flexibility, because we calculate some coefficients of flexibility there. So let's start. Imagine that you have this type of a structure. This structure is a statically indeterminate of first degree. You can see that because you have three plus one, four reactions, and only one member that you can extract equations. So it would be a statically indeterminate of first degree. And this is going to be the approximate deflected shape for that member. Now, how to calculate that using the method of forces? First, you have to select what redundant, and redundant is called those reactions that are extra on top of the equations of equilibrium. But those reactions have to be chosen very carefully because the beam or the structure has to be stable. So there are different ways that you can eliminate that. For example, if we eliminate the roller here, that structure is still stable and statically determinate, as you can see. However, they are not the same. There is the deflected shape here, which is different. Here is zero, look at that, the deflection, here you have a deflection, and on top of that, the reactions are going to be different as well. Now, how to do that? Well, remember I'm explaining just the basics of the principle. So, what form do you think you have to push this back in order to make this structure to look like that one? You're right. The structure you have to push that with a force equivalent to the reaction P1. When you push that in that direction, the beam is gonna go and look exactly like the first one. This is the basic principle, and this is how the method of consistent deformations work. Now, you don't know the value of Vy, and this is our main goal, so let's try to break this into parts. First, you are going to eliminate one redundant. It doesn't have to be BY, but in this particular example, I'm going to eliminate BY. It could be deflection, it could be rotation. If we are eliminating deflection, we are eliminating, we're making consistent deflections, then we're eliminating forces. If you're making consistent rotation, then we will, should be eliminating this moment here. But for this case, let's eliminate BY. Remember, you have this structure now that is determined. Now, the next step is in this structure with only the external load, as it looks like, we are going to calculate that deflection in B. After that, we're gonna get the same structure and we are gonna push it up with the reaction in B, which is gonna produce that deflection in the other direction. And because this deflection here plus this deflection here has to be zero, that's what basically uh, works. That's how this principle works. This system will be equivalent to this system plus that one here. Now, how are we going to find BY? If we, if we knew BY, we don't have to do anything else. So let's see what we do in this case. First, remember we are working in the elastic range. We are not talking about nonlinearity here. And this is one of the conditions. First, Eliminate one redundant. Once again, in this case, we are going to eliminate B1. And then we have to calculate that deflection. How do you calculate that deflection? It's up to you. I mean, you can use several methods for that. You can use conjugating. You can use virtual work. You can even read those values from usually the back covers of the book come with the, some of the tables for deflection that you can use. Now, in the same instruction, in the reduced structure without the load, then we're going to push it with a unit load. And that unit load is going to produce what is called a deflection here, but we don't call it deflection, we call it coefficient of flexibility or flexibility coefficient. And then we apply the compatibility equation. What is the compatibility equation? We know it's like a boundary condition. We know that the deflection in the real beam has to be zero at B. That means that if this coefficient of flexibility was produced by a unit load and we are in the linear elastic range, then the value for delta V is going to be achieved by 
pushing this up, or saying it in that way, with an equivalent value of by. And that plus this should be zero. And then we solve for by. That's the principle. Easy. Now, let's say that we decide to eliminate the moment as a redundant. No problem, we can do that as well. We eliminate the moment as a redundant, and this structure will become this one here. This one here is still stable, however, they are not the same. You can see that in this case, the rotation, because it's a fixed support, is zero, but in this case, we have a rotation that is shown because we, we, we transform that into a pin. What do we do? We have to apply that moment back in order to make this structure to be like that one. That's what we have to do. And then the structure will become the same. Applying the same principle that we did before, the procedure will be the same. will be like this. First, eliminate the redundant. We eliminate the moment. And in this structure, we are performing statics. And we are calculating the reactions. And we are calculating everything regarding to this structure. We can calculate that rotation over there. Now, in the, in the, in the determining structure, in this structure, without any external load, now we are going to apply a unit moment because we are dealing with rotations now. And with that unit moment applied at that point, then we are calculating a coefficient of flexibility due to that unit moment. At the end, the rotation at A should be zero because it's a fixed support. And what we do is apply again the equation of equilibrium, the, the compatibility equation, the rotation in A calculated in this way, plus that coefficient multiplied by the moment at A, should produce this zero rotation at that point, and then we solve for the unknown. That's it for this introductory video. Now in the next video, I'm going to solve a beam example. Watch the second part of the video, please.